Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for another segment of First Chapter Friday. My name is Lucy and the book that I'm sharing with you today is a young adult novel written in verse. It is called The Black Flamingo and this is the debut novel, novel of a British poet named Dean Atta. It's the story of Michael and Jelly, who is a gay mixed race teen growing up in London. His father's from Jamaica. His mother is from Cyprus. He lives solely with his mother. His father is, is really absent from his life. Um, Michael has sort of spent all his life navigating what his mixed race means. He never feels black enough. He never feels Greek enough. He doesn't really feel like he has a place to fit in. And then he also, um, struggles with other pieces of his identity, his sexual identity, um, gender identity. These are all things that come into play for Michael in this book. And because he has a difficult time finding a place and finding acceptance, he needs somewhere to channel his thoughts. And thus he does this through poetry and he writes a lot of poetry, which is woven really seamlessly into the narrative of this book. I think that's one of the great reasons why the book is written in verse itself, because the the author um, sort of inserts Michael's poems in a very organic way. And they are some of the really the most powerful parts of the story. Um, we meet Michael at the beginning of this book at a young age. He's six years old, but the book then jumps ahead to his teenage years. And um, as I said before, he's really struggling to find acceptance in a lot of different communities. And where he does finally find that, is in the world of drag. And um, so the Black Flamingo is the drag name that he picks for himself. I loved this book because I thought it was a really great coming of age tale that was told in a very unique way. Um, it addressed really well the issues of finding oneself and also just of embracing your uniqueness, how important that can be if you have the right support to do with that. It deals with a lot of really um, relevant and important issues with racism, gender identity, um, internalized homophobia and externalized homophobia. It it gets into some deep stuff, but it also has some really lighthearted and loving moments. And um, I found it to be a great and quick read. And unlike anything, Michael was really a character that I hadn't seen before. Um, so I'm going to read to you the first chapter of this book. It's actually um, hard to read it into chapters because of the way it's written, written in verse, but I'm going to start here with the prologue of The Black Flamingo. I am the Black Flamingo. The Black Flamingo is me trying to find myself. This book is a fairy tale in which I am the prince and the princess. I am the king and the queen. I am my own wicked witch and fairy godmother. This book is a fairy tale in which I'm cursed and blessed by others. But finally, I am the fairy finding my own magic. When female flamingos lay eggs in the zoo, the eggs are taken from them and put into incubators. The zookeepers give dummy eggs to flamingo couples to nest with, while the zookeepers watch their behavior to figure out who will make the best flamingo parents. When the incubated eggs are almost ready to hatch, they decide which couple will be given normal eggs and which will be left with those that never contained precious life. I often feel like a bad egg that was not meant to be, like a dummy egg cracked open, an impossible thing, but somehow living and thriving, defying the zookeeper's intentions, an experiment they watch and patiently wait to see what might become of me to see how I will survive without complete love. I was born in London two months before the end of the world on October 31st, 1999. Mummy tells me when we got closer to the millennium, people thought planes would fall from the sky and clocks and computers would go back 100 years, but time cannot go back. We can only move forward. I am a baby just hatched. My only feathers are my tiny eyelashes. Over my gurgling, I don't hear my father telling mummy, I'm too young to be a dad. 
Mummy tells me all this when I'm old enough. How six days before the millennium, she burned their Christmas dinner and he shouted, you're useless, before throwing his plate down, turkey stuck to the kitchen floor. And I cried, startled by early indoor fireworks. That was the end for them, the beginning for Mummy and me. So that was the prologue, and I'll go a little bit into the first chapter, which is called Barbies and Belonging. Today is my sixth birthday, and I'm hiding in my room. Last year, for my birthday, Uncle B bought me this Casio watch. Look, it lights up and is water resistant. That means I can wear it in the bath. Last night, when Mummy was making dinner, I snuck into her bedroom and looked inside her wardrobe, parting clothes to see the back where she always hides my presents. I picked up the parcel, feeling the shape of the long, thin box inside the silver wrapping paper. It was definitely the right shape to be a Barbie. I carefully peeled the tape at one end and peeked underneath the wrapping paper at the top of the box to see a green logo, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I told mommy two months ago, if you only get me one present this year, please, can it be a Barbie? Michael calls mommy, where are you? Come down and open your birthday present. Your friends will be arriving soon. I stand at the top of our stairs and shout down, is it a Barbie? Mommy comes to the bottom step, smiling gently. No, Michael, I didn't think you were serious, but I got you something I know you'll love. I watched a tear land on the wooden floor between my turtle slippers, a gift from Auntie B last Christmas. Mummy, mummy comes upstairs embracing me in a soft, warm, mum-smelling hug. Oh, darling, I can get you a Barbie for Christmas if you still want one. Christmas is ages away. I'm about to cry again when the doorbell rings. Emily, Amber, Laura, Toby, and Jamal have all come around for birthday dinner with their moms. Callum is the last one to arrive. His dad brings him, but doesn't stay like the moms do. Callum and Emily don't like each other. Callum lives in a flat with his dad. They play video games together and eat takeout for dinner. And sometimes Callum gets to stay up and watch TV all night if his dad is out. It must be so much fun. Callum is mixed the same way as me, a black dad and white mummy, but he doesn't live with his mummy and I don't live with my dad. Mummy has made stuffed grape leaves, stuffed peppers and Greek salad. There's olives, carrot sticks, pita bread and hummus, which I love and tarama salada, which I think tastes yucky, but I love the word. I teach my friends how to pronounce it. Tarama salata, tarama salata. What is it, asks Callum, and why is it pink? It's fish eggs, I say proudly, and my mummy told me it's dyed pink. I think it looks pretty. But it tastes disgusting, Callum says, spitting it back out onto his plate. I hate pink. He scowls, looking at Emily. Later, I blow out six candles on my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles birthday cake and make my wish for a Barbie. So I'm gonna stop there, um, but that just gives you a little bit, the first, the prologue sort of tells you what Michael's voice, his teenage voice sounds like and some of the, um, the style that he writes in. And then you get introduced to him as a little boy, um, you meet some of the friends who will be characters later in the book. So that is The Black Flamingo from Dean Atta, and I hope that you give it a try. I really enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.